Intercom wants more than nice people visiting your website to give you money. So they took that little chat bubble in the corner of a website and packed it with automatic meeting booking, data capture on leads, conversational bots, and more. Intercom user Elegant Themes added Intercom to their site and now converts 25% of leads through live chat. Go to intercom.com slash deals to jump on customer intent in the moment. Then see everything else Intercom can do. That's intercom.com slash deals. Hey, welcome back. Batter up. Time for the next round of sales pipeline playoffs here. With the one man, the only man perhaps who saw the rise, the strange rise, the unpredictable rise of the Washington Nationals and how they would destroy my Dodgers and seemingly everybody else, Matt Hines. Are you kidding? I had no idea. Nobody had any idea. <laughs> Nationals fans had no idea. They had this no is a team idea. that was like, they were like 15 games below 500 approaching the uh, Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. Which is usually, if you're not contending Memorial Day weekend, you're kind of done. And here they are. Shocked the world, two wins at, again on the road against the heavily favored Houston Astros. I know we are dating this episode within the first 15 seconds. Well, look what they did to the Dodgers. Um, Dodgers won the most. Didn't the Dodgers win the most of anybody? And everybody assumed they were going to cruise to another uh, World uh, Series here, and instead they got uh, embarrassed like everybody is. This, this is why they play the games. If it was, <laughs> if it was other, otherwise, if we just said, okay, whoever's favored to win, let's just give it to them. This is why we watch, Paul. This is why we watch. This is it. Well, batter up. Who'd you bring with you to uh, knock it out of the park today here? Oh, my goodness. Another amazing guest. Another great episode planned for everyone. Welcome. Thank you again for joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio. One of the advantages of recording live, we are alive every week at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern, is it doesn't matter where we are, Paul. We are recording live. So I am uh, I am in beautiful downtown Seattle sitting outside of an event we're doing uh, with a couple of partners later today, this afternoon. It is a beautiful blue sky Fall colors. I love this time of year. But do you have a but, cup uh, of coffee? You can't be sitting outside in Seattle without a cup of coffee or a, or a microbrew uh, beer, one or the other. I don't. Yeah, care. I mean, so technically I'm sitting in my truck in a parking spot <laughs> that I haven't paid for yet. And this is real time. This is real. Video. We're going to be the over-under on whether the parking guy comes and tells me that I can't sit here <laughs> without having paid for the parking. I'm just kind of milking the next 25 minutes. Okay. Thanks for joining us for another episode. If you're listening to us live, on the Funnel Media Radio Network. Thank you for joining us during your workday. If you joined us through uh, where all fine podcasts are available uh, and listening to this uh, through the RSS feed, thank you so much for subscribing. We uh, continue to hit bigger and bigger numbers for our audience, well over 100,000 listeners in 2019. So very excited and very humbled by all of that. And if you want to catch any episode of Sales Pipeline Radio, past, present, and future, you can find any of them at Sales Pipeline Radio. Dot com. Every week we're featuring some of the best and brightest minds in B2B, and today is absolutely no different. Today, very excited to have with us Kevin Canarium. He is the Chief Revenue Officer for Clary. And my first question to you, Kevin, is I'm 90% sure I nailed the pronunciation of your last name. How did I do? Not very many people can get our last name right, so you, you actually hit it on the head, which is pretty amazing. It, it's, it's all in the pre-production and the practice, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I was very excited to, to have you on. You know, look at sort of the places that you have worked. You've been running sales and leading sales in some of the largest you know, technology organizations in the world. And love you know, what Clary is now doing to bring AI and automation to revenue operations. And I guess my first question to you is, we don't hear the term revenue operations very often. You, you hear people talk about marketing operations, sales operations, sometimes business operations. Revenue ops feels like a newer term. How do you guys think about that? And why is that important? If you think about it, revenue is really a process, right? It's not just an outcome. And you know, so many companies are just focused on that outcome, that number. But at the end of the day, if that number, right, the forecast, which I'd argue is the single most important number any company has, and you don't have a process to get there, you don't have a process to run predictable revenue, the single most important number and the single most important process in the company, which is revenue, has never really had a process to back it up, unlike supply chain, unlike marketing operations. So Clary's here to change that. I love that. And I think, you know, you, it requires in many cases organizations to think holistically about sales and marketing together. I think, you know, one of the biggest challenges that we've seen, and you guys may face as well, is sort of the silos that exist between sales and marketing. How are you seeing some of the leading companies that are addressing that? How are you seeing them overcome that and actually create stronger bonds and cohesion between sales and marketing? I think first, what's really changed that's created this need for sales and marketing to work together? I'd say it's the buyer's journey. 
has changed, right? And the the way they interact out there in the digital world and the things they have access to uh, and the things they're touching, they do all this homework before they even get to a salesperson. And so all that work that's happening out there from a digital standpoint it is really enabled and enriched and tracked by the marketing organization because, right, the buyer's journey is so nonlinear. We need ways to understand it, track it, and affect them. Why has that changed? I think it really has to do with the change in revenue models, right? As we went from on-prem to SaaS, we now have to resell our customers at every term, right? So this continuous journey. So what we're out there talking about, and I think my company is a really good example of how this works well, our chief marketing officer and myself have worked really hard to become aligned on that buyer's journey and how the strategy from brand to demand gen to engagement to sales needs to be completely in sync and on the same page. And we're seeing a lot of companies, especially those that are growth companies, that are SaaS B2B companies, really focus on getting these two uh, really important parts of the organization aligned. I'll give you some examples without naming names. We're fortunate to have a, a super fast growing company is hiring like mad their customers engage with their platform before a sales rep ever touches them. And that has to do with effective branding out there in the marketplace, effective ways of reaching that community, which is a lot of times are developers. And so by the time a sales rep is actually getting to that customer, they've interacted with the product, they've interacted with material, they've interacted with training, they've interacted with all this thought leadership and third-party documents so by the time they're ready to say, okay, I'm going to go from a trial to a purchase, they're so bought into the product that it's a, that it's a quick expansion for this customer. I love that. That's a good story. We're talking today on Sales Pipeline Radio with Kevin Canarium. He's the Chief Revenue Officer at Clary. I, I love that you talk about how you are starting to create and operationalize revenue op- operations in your own company. Can you talk a little bit about some, what you've seen and experienced as some of the best practices of how to take what can oftentimes be good strategic alignment between sales and marketing and really bringing that down to a tactical level? Like getting going from we agree to revenue responsibility across departments at SKO to what do we do on Tuesday? What are some keys right. to helping make sure that operational alignment happens on a day-to-day tactical level? We've moved very far beyond, all right, marketing's producing MQLs and sales is saying those MQLs are no good. They don't translate into to opportunities for us. So what we really do, so think about, right, growth company, you don't have unlimited marketing funds, so you have to get really strategic about how you apply them. What we do and what my CMO and I do every week is we'll actually go through the hierarchy of pipeline. And we'll take a look at, you know, we've got a pipeline, multiple target. And we'll go through the hierarchy and we'll look for parts of the, um, the globe where, where we may need to help get that pipeline up. And then we'll take all the tools that we have from a marketing standpoint, all the strategies that we have, you know, what we're doing from a brand standpoint out in the marketplace. We'll say, how do we build a program that we're completely aligned on that does the attribution, the SEO, the AB integrates with the demand gen team who's uh, helping with the inbound but also responding and doing outbounding. And we'll put a program in place that is completely lockstep and integrated. And then we have a platform, right, in Clary that allows us to monitor that top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel to ensure that we're creating the right activity, that we're getting engagement, and then we have real visibility into it and then can predict how are we going to translate those leads that are way up in funnel all the way down into pipeline for that region that needs uh, additional targeting. Let's go a little deeper on the idea of prediction, right? I think especially with sales organizations and every salesperson, whether they're successful or not, really is just trying to focus their time and efforts as best they can on on what works and on what's going to help them make money. And I think that we've made some pretty big leaps from being able to do just sort of some simple arbitrary lead scoring to being able to use artificial intelligence to help answer a very simple question for a sales rep, which is, what should I do next? What's the best next step for me to get me closer to making money? Can you give some examples of how that works. I think a lot of companies really continue to struggle with Salesforce productivity and effectiveness yep. in how they're selecting what to do. Yeah, I, I kind of, if you don't mind, I'll rewind the tape a bit. I started my selling career at Siebel System 20 years ago, right? So the first enterprise CRM. And if I think about it, what's changed in the last 20 years in regards to CRM? Really, the only thing that's changed is it went from on-prem to the cloud. And so if you put your, yourself in, in the shoes of a sales rep, the CRM to them is a place where they put data. 
And it's a place where reports are run. The CRM's never given anything back to the sales rep. It's never given them visibility into understanding how healthy is their business. And so what modern tools and AI have allowed us to do is, one, to change the nature of that relationship between the sales rep and their sales systems. So first, one of the things sales reps hate to do is to, to go in and add a contact and add an opportunity and, and to add notes. If we're now in a position where we can collect all of this signal data, that's happening outside of the CRM, that's happening in the top of funnel systems, the middle of funnel engagement system, and, and all those areas of the buyer's journey and bring that signal together against the opportunity that that sales reps use to run their business, and then start to look at how that opportunity moves through the sales funnel compared to years worth of opportunities that have successfully moved through the sales funnel for that customer you now have the ability to apply AI and machine learning to this sales rep. Here's how this compares to others that have gone through. You've got a healthy deal. You have an unhealthy deal. And we're not just relying on what's happening from a data input into the CRM. We're relying on all these other signals. We can have a really healthy understanding of what's the reality of this opportunity. What are my blind spots, right? Biggest thing I think that can help a sales rep is just being extremely clear on on how healthy their opportunity is, where their blind spots are. Now think about it. Sales reps get agita preparing for a forecast call, right? Because they know they're going to get grilled and they know it's going to be an interrogation. What if that sales rep manager one-on-one goes from an interrogation into a coaching opportunity where you're really looking at the same data against an opportunity. And now you have the ability to say, hey, this is trajecting in the right place, in the right area. We have some blind spots. We don't have access to power base or, you know, where the last week of the quarter documents, you know, haven't been opened by the customer. It's, so we have visibility in a lot. So it's really, I think modern tools and AI are changing the way we think about revenue from being something that you use spidey sense to figure out, you know, if you're going to get a deal done. So now we're using data backed up by AI and machine learning. Love it. We got to take a quick break here, pay some bills. We'll be back with more with Kevin Kinnery. He's the CRO, Chief Revenue Officer at Clarion. We're going to be talking more about sales process improvement. I want to dig in more on that dreaded sales status meeting that every sales rep does definitely cringe to go into and how those can be made more better, but better, more efficient. We'll be right back on Sales Pipeline Radio. What does insight-driven messaging look like for sales? Like a whole lot more deals. Fast. Jump on high intent leads in the moment with Intercom, the business messenger that extends the reach of your team 24-7. Intercom creates more opportunities for you by booking meetings and collecting data from leads automatically. Take Intercom user Elegant Themes. They now convert 25% of leads through Intercom's messenger. Deals don't wait. Get them with Intercom. Go to intercom.com slash deals. That's intercom.com slash deals. And let's take it back to Matt and his guest. Thank you very much for joining us. we got a few more minutes here to talk a little more about sales ops, sales productivity, sales efficiency. And before the break, we were talking a little bit, Kevin, we were talking about sort of that sales status meeting. And whether you're in sales or you're in marketing, you probably sat through you know that meeting where the more the reps talk, the more they feel like they're being, they're looking busy and their pipeline looks full and it just is waste of a lot of people's time. I love the idea of getting to, you know, moving from just reporting to coaching and being able to focus on the deals that matter, the deals that need support. You talk to most sales managers and they feel like they spend too much time managing and not enough time coaching. Can you, can you just clarify for people, what is the difference between the two and why that, why that distinction and why that transition is so important? Yeah. So if you think about the old way of doing things, right, and a manager rep one-on-one or a manager with his entire team or, or at any level, right, in an organization from a forecast standpoint or a deal inspection standpoint, it's typically been a level of inspection in that leader trying to understand the reality of what is happening in that deal and why so they can forecast their business, but too, so they can report up to their leadership on the health of the opportunities and where we're going to land. And that typically takes time. Every individual does that in a different way. There's no consistency across it. And so you have what happens is management by judgment. People are putting their own analysis and their own story on top of that. And what typically happens by the time it gets from sales rep to head of sales is a game of telephone tag happened and the narrative changes. 
by the time it's rolled up. If you transition to what is more of a coaching opportunity, and the reason you can transition to a coaching opportunity is everyone is now looking at the reality of the business through the same lens. The data doesn't lie. If the data doesn't lie, it's very clear where you have risk, where you have opportunity. And from that point, you can transition from trying to understand the story and get to the bottom of it to, hey, we have an opportunity to do something really special here. Imagine if we could get to this individual in the power base who doesn't seem to be represented in the activity that's happening on this opportunity. You've gone from an inspection into a how do we accelerate our business together? What it also does for managers and for entire organizations is that you've now sort of level set your sales process. You've put everyone on the same page. So you can get to a point where you've got consistent review, analysis, and coaching of the business at all levels on a global way. Now we try on Sales Pipeline Radio, we focus you know, to, to address both sales and marketing leaders. And I think for those listening to this so far, it may feel like a very sales centric conversation. But for, I think, a lot of revenue responsible marketing teams, this should all be music to their ears. When you talk to heads of marketing, when you talk to the marketing operations folks, what are some of the primary benefits and reasons why they should think about adopting more of an AI solution that can focus on the right deals and improve forecast accuracy? What kind of benefit can that have up the funnel for marketing organizations? There's several areas, and let me start with the simplest, and I'll build from the bottom up. The first thing is, is, if you're starting to capture engagement with contacts that are not in your marketing system and in your CRM system, right, that are just out there in Outlook or Exchange or, or Google Mail, if you can now capture that contact and get them associated with the account and the opportunity, you can start to capture activity that's happening at an engagement level across the buyer's journey with that individual. You can see what are they touching? Are they responding to correspondence? And so the first thing you've done is you've very quickly enriched the community of lead contacts that can be nurtured by marketing. So that's, that's mm -hmm. one area that these systems can help with. The second is obviously now you've got the ability to capture all this activity. Marketing can see what's working and what's not working. And so here's where the two worlds really come together nicely. Let's say you've got a large, complicated opportunity that spans the globe and has multiple touch points. And on the buyer side, maybe there's 15 people engaged in this opportunity. You could actually see how engaged they are outside of just what's happening when you go on site and have a meeting. What are they touching out there in the universe? What are they looking at? Are they responding to your content? And so if you're planning a complicated sales cycle, you can go to marketing and say, hey, these 10 people that are associated with the, this opportunity, they're not engaged at all can you help me engage them? So now you're getting really strategic in how you're nurturing and doing ABM for a particular account in a particular part of the region. The other thing that's really nice is that you've now got this AI model that's saying, we've seen what effective opportunities look like as they go from lead, right, to an S0 opportunity all the way to close, how long they take, how the deal changed, how the value of the opportunity went up and down. So they now have this pattern of what has been an effective sales cycle from beginning to end and what has not been an effective sales cycle. So that now we can fine tune future marketing strategies, ABM, et cetera. So sales and marketing really now get on the same page into what's working and tracking that entire buyer's journey from beginning to end. Just a couple more minutes here, wrapping up with Kevin Canary. I mean, he's the chief revenue officer at Clarion. Yeah, I feel like 2019, we, we've been talking about AI for a long time, and I think it's always felt a little more theoretical. I think finally we're seeing a number of places where AI is having real practical applicability that feels more accessible to organizations. Are there other applications of AI that you see specifically for customer-facing organizations, sales, marketing, customer success? Are there additional elements that may be more theoretical now, but you think in the next you know, one to three years are going to become more, more reachable? The cohorts from a revenue standpoint, so if you think about the revenue journey, right, it's you're not just selling and moving on, but you've got to uh, make that customer successful and implement and onboard, and then you want them coming back to you to renew and expand. So applying AI to that entire journey, understanding is the customer happy? What is the customer using? 
how do we create upsell and, and white space experience? So it really does go across the entire journey and everyone from the revenue team who touches them, not just marketing and not just sales. And if we go back to some of the things we talked about from a coaching moment, right, you now have the ability to really look at every interaction with a customer and, you know, kind of parse through the conversation and get to the point where did my rep validate the customer, what the customer said? Did they say a competitive landmine? Did they pitch correctly? And so now if you're able to have coaching moments around customer calls, you can actually now create real-time enablement to change behavior and adapt quickly. Where AI is coming into, right, is helping to create predictable revenue, predictable renewals, as well as a predictable sales process and real-time enablement. Okay, well, maybe last question for you as we kind of run up on time here is you've been around, you're running sales, as you mentioned, for a number of companies, big companies, SAP, Oracle, et cetera. Who are some of the people that you would say have been some of your biggest influences? They could be professors, managers, authors. In your career as you've grown and learned, who are some people that you've been particularly inspired by that you might recommend other people check out as well? Yeah, I, you know, I, I had a great fortune of, of working for some amazing people, especially at SAP where I spent 11 years. It was home and family to me. One of the greatest sales leaders in the world is Bill McDermott. Bill has a way of inspiring people to do more than they ever thought they could do. And I feel fortunate that I had firsthand witness to that and I've been able to replicate that uh, in my career. I had a great fortune of working for a gentleman, Chris Ball, who is a GM at Adobe uh, and runs the Americas and a, a leadership style that was one that embraced ownership, creativity, passion, and, and curiosity. And so as I look for leaders and sales reps in my organization, curiosity is probably the most important thing for me, folks that are really curious about what their customer is doing and how they can help. So those are two people in my career that have been instrumental in helping shape me. I love what you're saying about inspiring curiosity, right? And inspiring people to sort of wonder why things are the way they are, to question sacred cows in some places. A book I read uh, a number of years ago that really inspired me on that front called uh, Getting Naked by Robert Leccioni. And, you know, he's the uh, author of Five Dysfunctions of a Team, probably his best known book. And um, he talks about, in Getting Naked, he talks about three things that people are afraid of that keep them from generating more loyalty and trust among customers and colleagues, et cetera. It's the fear of getting fired, the fear of being wrong, and the fear of sounding dumb. And I think that you remind me of that when you talk about curiosity is sometimes, you know, you ask the questions that feel like they're sort of the etched in stone status quo. Like you question things, sometimes you're going to be wrong, but like to be able to step out and to have an environment where you can be curious, but also where you can take those risks, sometimes just in asking the right questions, super important. Well, thanks again for joining us today. I want to thank our guest, Kevin Canarian. If you like this conversation and want to hear more of it, I want to share it with the rest of your organization, others in your organization, you'll find it in a couple of days at salespipelineradio.com. We will also have a transcribed, edited version of this conversation up on HeinzMarketing.com in about a week. Please join us next week and every week at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. We'll be featuring more great guests uh, focused on uh, making sales and marketing better in the B2B world. Until then, my name is Matt Heinz. I'm on behalf of our great producer, Paul. Thanks for listening to Sales Pipeline Radio. And with that, we wrap up another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio right here on the Funnel Radio channel for at-work listeners like you.